Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We are here at the Technical Forum and my name is Muriel Buakas. I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to the upcoming presentation regarding um, engineered carbon supports for durable electric catalysts. Um, please welcome with me on stage the catalyst manufacturing manager of Pajarito Powder, Dr. Alia Lubers. Thank you. Stage is yours. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Aliyah. I am the Catalyst Manufacturing Manager of Pajarito Powder. We are in Albuquerque, New Mexico in the US um, and we generally make carbon. Um, what I'd like to talk to you today about is the really important role carbon has within a fuel cell and specifically as a support material and its contribution to durable electrocatalysts. So as you may know, fuel cells are expensive and they continue to be expensive despite um, improvements on stack costs. And one of the largest contributions to that cost is the catalyst itself. So in evaluating the efficacy of a catalyst within a fuel cell, it's important to look at multiple criteria not just performance, um, but also durability and stability, as well as costs um, and manufacturing, both at a small scale and a large scale. So the most common catalyst for fuel cells is a conventional platinum on carbon. And although it works fairly well in the performance metric, it's actually pretty lacking in durability and stability and it also does not scale well uh, in terms of cost. So we have developed our Veripore uh, manufacturing platform to address these problems to meet all of the criteria for a good catalyst. We are able to produce three main product lines from our platform. We make engineered catalyst supports, precious metal-free catalysts, which have no platinum. And we also are starting to produce more and more electrolyzer catalysts, although this is fairly new for us. Um, so I'd like to mainly focus my talk today on our engineered catalyst support. Generally, our Veripor method is we will mix organic precursors with pore formers. We'll heat treat that. and. Most of our materials are made with that sick recipe. We can also optionally deposit platinum or platinum alloys on those materials. OK, so if we look at this spider graph again, comparing all of our metrics, um, where better is farther away from uh, the middle, we, um, with our precious metal free catalyst in the green, we can actually achieve really affordable materials. However, um, performance is still improving. With our um, engineered catalyst support, which I'll focus my talk on today, um, we can improve upon conventional platinum on carbon catalysts, uh, not only in performance, but also in durability and stability, where uh, conventional platinum on carbon has the most trouble. Additionally, because our Veripore method is very scalable, we can eventually, at high volumes, address the affordability uh, metric. So in general, most of our uh, materials look like this, mainly made of carbon. The point of our engineered catalyst support is to mainly address carbon corrosion within the cell. So this will improve durability and increase device lifetimes. We also want to improve the ability to um, make a catalyst system, so deposit platinum onto our engineered catalyst support, and to make carbon that makes it more um, easier to deposit that platinum. Um, how we achieve this is by influencing the characteristics of the carbon itself. That can include 
uh, primary particle size, pore size, surface area, and also if you have any functional groups on the carbon itself. Um, here are some pore size distributions of some of our materials, and we have been able to produce a range, quite a wi wide range, between um, five and a half to 40 nanometers of pore sizes, and we can have mixtures of compositions uh, in between those sizes as well. Um, to various uh, compositions. We can also increase the surface area without compromising the size of the particles, or of the pores, um, at least not uh, to a great degree. Um, although our pores are not continuously interconnected, we do have a high degree of interconnectivity if you require that for your uh, catalyst support. Because the types of carbon are um, within the support itself are very important, especially for durability. Um, generally, more graphitic carbon will lead to more stable uh, and more durable support. Uh, within the catalyst layer, and with our Veripore method, we are able to influence the degree of graphitization or disordered carbon. Um, so comparing, this is a Raman spectra, uh, the higher and the more narrow peaks, the more associated with that type of carbon. So if we have graphite, which has a very high uh, graphite peak, less disordered peak, we can match the amount of graphite content of graphite itself, um, and we are also able to make more disordered materials as well. So depending on your needs, um, we have a high degree of customization uh, in our ability to make these carbons. Mainly for demonstration purposes, we are also developing um, capability to deposit platinum and platinum alloys. Um, between two and five nanometers on our supports um, so it can be uh, assessed as a support within a catalyst. And furthermore, we are developing capability to fabricate MEAs, although this isn't our strength. We are a carbon manufacturer and that's our expertise. In order to evaluate if it's a good support or if it's a good catalyst, we have also started to produce MEAs for evaluation. How we do that is use a high shear mixer for um, producing inks. We have a sprayer to produce gas diffusion electrodes. Um, and we use a heated press to produce a seven layer MEA. We also use a DOE recommended accelerated stress test to mostly evaluate carbon corrosion. Um, so the graphs that I will show you will apply this type of accelerated stress test. So just looking at OCV, comparing a conventional catalyst to our catalyst, uh, beginning of life is before the accelerated stress test, and end of life is um, after the stress test. And this is using our carbon with an in-house platinization on the cathode side of a PEM fuel cell. So what we can see just in OCV, we are able to have a higher OCV after our accelerated stress test. Um, it is higher than the beginning of life of the conventional catalyst. And of course, the beginning of life is better than the OCV for both, uh, both commercial catalyst tests. Although we can make large improvements in actual testing, these pole curves show that our platinization method and um, MEA fabrication, we are able to match or um, produce more current uh, using our carbon and our platinization method than in a conventional catalyst. When we apply the accelerated stress test, we can see that our carbon is able to reduce the amount of carbon corrosion compared to a conventional platinum on carbon catalyst. 
So this is a real testament to the stability and durability of the carbons that we make. So just to look at this again, the material characteristics I showed you contribute to the performance and also this, the durability and stability of our um, carbon supports compared to a conventional platinum on carbon catalyst. Because our Veripore method is very scalable, we are also able to address, especially for our um, car manufacturing uh, customers, at large scale, the economics also become very favorable. So in the next, um, in the next coming decades, uh, we are looking at more and more fuel cells being utilized. And if our carbon is utilized, we can actually cut the cost of the catalyst, which, remember, is a significant contributor to the cost of the overall stack. Um, if our carbon is used, uh, we can reduce that cost even further. So we are very fortunate to be involved in several um, grant opportunities, mostly um, run by the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and this allows us to make a lot more interesting materials, one of which is electrolyzer materials, and we are having more and more results for that. Um, so look for that upcoming. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, great IP we have generated from decades of research on carbon in North America. And um, this allows us to make these interesting materials. So if you have any questions or you would like to discuss uh, anything concerning um, carbon or fuel cell catalysts, feel free to visit our booth at B76. Um, I will be there all week, as well as our CEO and our um, director of business development. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, I can also address those now. Thank you very much, Aliyah. Are there any questions right now from the audience? No? Um, so how far are you with the commercialization? Are you already, are you doing this or? We mostly sell sample size yes. um, or very small sizes, so under a kilogram generally. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and another question, um, you, you have a new president uh, in the US. Is this a, a topic you, you, are, you were discussing or you you observing how the development is going on? Or um, there, there is influence on funding opportunities, and we will just have to see. Um, unfortunately, there is um, discussion on de-emphasizing sustainable energy, um, so it's possible that we might be affected or okay. the industry in general in the U.S. will be affected, but um, hopefully that's, that's not, not the case. Not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. One last applause for her. Thanks. Uh, we will continue with the next presentation in about seven minutes at 22 2 p.m. with um, Dr. Markus Tegel from the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Technology and Advanced Materials regarding the topic hydrogen on-demand solutions based on power paste technology. Please stay with us. Uh, we have coffee and some refreshments and see you in a few minutes. Thank you very much.